Today we are making hummingbird cake. And no, there's no hummingbirds in this cake. This is a cake that I used to make a lot. Oh, it's usually around Thanksgiving. I don't make it as much now, but I used to make it uh, years ago, quite a bit every year. Uh, I can remember my grandmother and a few other family members, this is one of their favorite cakes. And it's one of mine too. This is a, a cake that's, um, it's really moist. It's a little bit lighter than maybe, um, say for instance, a carrot cake or something like that. You can make this in a bunt pan. I'm gonna make mine in two nine inch cake pans. You can make it if you want to in maybe two small loaf pans. It does make quite a bit though. I would say a regular sized loaf pan. Um, it's got a cream cheese glaze on it, so it's really gonna be good. It's more of an icing than it is a glaze. But uh, hummingbird cake, it was originated in the islands of Jamaica. The hummingbird is the islands. Uh, that's just their national bird. And uh, I think they even have a nickname for the cake. It's called Dr. Cake or something like that. But uh, so that's where the name come from, it's hummingbird cake. So I'm not even gonna use my mixer. I'm just gonna mix it by hand. We've got three cups of all-purpose flour, and my oven's set on 350. I've got two cups of sugar, and I need one teaspoon of baking soda, I need a half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon. If there's some of these ingredients like cinnamon that you, you are either allergic to or just don't like, you could leave this cinnamon out. It does give it a really good flavor, but you can leave it out. Let's see, that's all my dry ingredients. So I'm just gonna kinda stir that together. Now this cake has a lot of oil in it too. That's why it's so moist. So between the oil that's got in it and the three eggs, it's just a really moist, um, light, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's just not as dense as a carrot cake, but kind of close to it. So we got our dry ingredients mixed up. And I've got one and a half cups of oil, if you use vegetable oil, whatever kind you use. And I know y'all say that's a lot of oil, and it does sound like a lot. That's just part of the cake. We've got three beaten eggs. Of course, I love anything with cream cheese icing on it. We've got one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. And I've got eight ounces of crushed pineapple. And this is pineapple that I've canned. And I've also, what I've done is I, I drained off most of the, the juice off the pineapple because that's going to go in our icing. So you got your pineapple. I also have two cups of diced bananas. Now, it's diced, it's not mushed up like you're making banana bread, so that's the difference there. So it's just two cups of diced bananas. And I've got a cup of nuts, whatever kind you like, pecans, walnuts, or you can leave them out. You could even put a little bit of coconut in here. I'm just going to stir this all up together. You can see I've got it all in there. It makes a pretty cake too. And like I said, I'm using two nine inch cake pans. Um, I've got them greased and I've also got parchment paper on the bottom. That's just to, to make sure that it doesn't stick. Now this cake it takes, the recipe always says it takes an hour, and I'm sure there's 
some ovens that it does take an hour. I had to put one, a recipe calls for an hour in my oven. I put it on 45 minutes and then I check it. And if it needs to cook a little bit longer, then I put another 10 minutes on it or so. That's just the difference in ovens. Now your, your batter is thick. You can see how thick that is. But it's just, it's a really good cake. It's a good cake to take to a potluck or any kind of get together because I guarantee you it's going to get ate real quick. And it's a cake that it's going to go a long ways, especially if you make it in a, like this, and then you cut your layers and put frosting in between layers because it's going to make a pretty good sized cake. And then you'll cut thinner pieces out of it. So you'll get quite a few pieces out of one cake. So I've got that stirred up good. I'm pretty sure I've got everything in it. That was up here. So now I'm going to take my cake pans. And I'm going to get, let's see. Let me get me a spoon. When it's this thick, I like to use a spoon. And I'm just going to measure out. And like I said, it is a thick batter. If you're going to put this in maybe two loaf pans, make sure you're greasing. Grease your loaf pans good. If you're putting it in a bump pan, grease it real good. Let me put some in this one. We'll see where we're at. It smells really good. I uh, been working on my cookbook orders. My oldest daughter came and helped me yesterday, and uh, we managed to get uh, around 150 books ready to go to the post office tomorrow this week. So now I'm out of cookbooks completely because that was, you know, I told you I was sold out. So I got all the all them orders filled. So now I'm waiting on my next cookbooks, and I've got them ordered, but uh, it, I'm not sure how long it's going to take, you know, for them to print it out and get them shipped to me. So if you don't get your cookbooks within a week or two, you know that you're, you're on the, the back order, but you will get your cookbooks. But I think I'm not going to take any more orders yet. So don't be sending me any more orders. And when I get my second uh, batch out and get them taken care of, um, I'm thinking because I've had, you know, this cookbooks went over so well. I've been so blessed with it that I'm going to have to find a different route. I'm going to have to get me some help in, in taking care of the, the books and the sales and the distributing and everything. So... This next, I've got a box over here with still about 500 orders in them. So once my cookbooks come in, I'm going to get them taken care of. And then we'll go from there. But uh, I tell you, it's just been, it's really been something. I have just been in awe how many orders I've gotten. And I just want to thank everybody. Um, but I'm trying to get them taken care of. And I've, I've learned my lesson on, <laughs> on underestimating a lot of things and thinking I could take care of them all. And I am taking care of them. But for me to continue, I'm going to have to get some help. So, anyways, like I said, if you don't get your cookbooks within a week or two, you'll know you're on the back order, but you will be getting them. So I'm going to get my cakes in the 350 oven. I'm going to set my timer for 45 minutes. 
and we'll see where we're at. I might have to put another 10 or 15 minutes on it and then we'll make our icing for our cake. Cakes are out of the oven and they're good and done. Done the toothpick test and it come out clean. The house smells wonderful. Both of them done real good. Now, of course, in my oven, it took 45 minutes. So it's going to take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Just depends. So now let's get to making the cream cheese icing. We got some of it started. Um, I've got eight ounces of room temperature cream cheese and a half a stick of room temperature butter. And what I've done is I've already tried to mix it up a little bit and I'm going to continue to do that and then we're going to put the rest of our ingredients in. I've got what was left over the, the juice out of my pineapple and it was a couple of tablespoons. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in there. I'm going to scrape this down a little bit and then I'm going to put my powdered sugar in there and I've got two cups, 16 ounces of powdered sugar. And it's all going to come together. I got my 16 ounces of powdered sugar in there and I'm just going to let this mix, let it get good and smooth and uh, when I get done I'll come back and I'll show you the uh, the consistency of it. Okay, consistency of the icing. Now, sometimes I might put that in the refrigerator and let it stiffen up a little bit, but we ain't got time for that today. So we're going to start putting it on our cake. And you see, it did rise good, but it's not a real, it doesn't rise like just real high and if you want to um, you could even that off but I'm not I don't want to waste it we're just going to put a little bit of the cream cheese on this layer now if you make this into a bunt cake um, you can make your glaze just a little bit looser or you could just kind of drizzle it all over the cake would be fine. I'll tell you, me and Mr. Brown don't do as much baking and, and cake eating as we used to when the kids were all home. It's usually a, if we've got family coming over or kids are over for a Sunday dinner or something, but there's just certain cakes that we do really like. I'm going to wash my hands. <clears throat> and we tend to always go back to the, the old-fashioned cakes. And I'm going to show you how easy it was to get this cake out of here. <laughs> well, the other one was. I hope this one's just as easy. And it comes right out of there just like that. You peel that bottom off, and you see how pretty golden brown that is. Now, because it's got going to have cream cheese icing on it, um, you're going to need to stick it in the refrigerator. And I always like to make them a, a day ahead if I'm going to take them somewhere. And we're just going to finish putting the icing on this, the top, and. If there's enough, we'll put it around the sides. If not, I guarantee you this is plenty of frosting on this cake because the cake is just so good by itself. I think sometimes you can overdo it with frosting. I know some people think, Miss Thor, you are crazy, but then you don't really taste the cake. So if you got a good cake, you want to be able to taste the cake. So I'm going to keep doing this and uh, then we'll come back and we're going to cut into this baby and we're going to taste it.
Okay, what I've done is I just let that ice and just kind of drip over the side and I just kind of smoothed it off there. Now, when you put it in the refrigerator, it's going to uh, do better. You can be able to spray a little bit better. But because we don't have all that time, we're just doing what we're doing. And what, I, what you can do, and what I'm going to do, is you can just sprinkle the top with more pecans. And when your icing is at this consistency, your pecans are going to stick better. Now you can also, if you got time, and what I usually do if I'm taking it, you know, uh, to a potluck or something, is I'll put pecans all the way around the side. I'll crush them up real small and uh, put them on the side of the cake. And it makes it real pretty cake. Some people don't like that many pecans. If they don't, they don't have to eat the cake. And you don't have to put the nuts. You don't have to put the nuts in the cake, and you don't have to put the nuts on the cake. If you don't like them, or if you're allergic to them, or something like that, you can still make this cake without the nuts. So we're pretty much done with that. And you could also put a uh, coconut if you wanted to. Just keep adding to it and make it really special. So, there is your hummingbird cake from the island of Jamaica. That's where it's named after. Or what they call the, the doctor cake. So let's cut it and let's try it. So it makes a really good, pretty cut of cake. So let's taste it. So I caught Mr. Brown so he could, of course, <laughs> taste the cake. And? And it tastes like little hummingbirds. <laughs> <laughs> now don't be telling people that. <clears throat> There's no hummingbirds in that cake. Did you hear what I told him about where the hummingbird cake come from? Where it was? Yes. From the island of Jamaica? It's a really, <clears throat> it's got a really good flavor to it, but it's, it's really moist too. It's got pineapples and bananas. I can definitely taste the bananas. Be good for breakfast, wouldn't it? <laughs> what I need, cake for breakfast. <laughs> um, so, it's larapin, ain't it? It's larapin. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, guys, I hope y'all try this recipe. It's a vintage recipe. It's a good cake. It's just one of them all around. Um, you know. If, you get tired of the same old, same old. This is just one of the vintage cakes that's so good. So we'll just sit here and watch Mr. Brown eat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll see y'all in a couple of days. God bless everybody. And we'll talk at you later.